Welcome to today's video. We've got actually a pretty interesting video up ahead. And what we're actually gonna do over the next probably 10 or 15 minutes or so is we're gonna introduce the world to a new concept, the idea of a biz bot. It's a derivation of a chatbot. And so what you see up in front of me, this is actually a streamlit UI that gives that very familiar interface that people are looking for when they think about generative AI of a dialogue driven interface, you know, with a model. The twist on this and what we're gonna to try to do to illustrate with this concept is in this case, instead of just asking a big open-ended question to a model or having a dialogue with a model in a chat type of context, relying on the model's general knowledge and capabilities, here for our BizBot, the BizBot actually is gonna have two modes in the original concept that we have of it. First mode would be a RAG mode. So in a RAG mode, you upload some document and the questions that you're gonna be asking are against your document. Then the second mode, and kind of the twist on this, where we think this is an interesting direction to go, the second mode will be a SQL mode. In the SQL mode, you're actually gonna be asking natural language queries then against a CSV that you can upload into the business bot. It gets converted into a SQL table, loaded in a database, and then a SQL model is brought in that actually can be run to convert your text query into SQL. And so the idea then of the BizBot is first, this is entirely grounded. So there aren't gonna be any queries going out first over the internet. All of this is gonna be running locally. It uses three separate models under the covers. We'll talk a little bit about those as we dive into it. But the real idea to this is this gives you two different modes of interaction to seamlessly be able to pivot back and forth between interacting you know, in a RAG context against a document and then interacting in a, in a very similar way, actually doing natural language queries into a SQL table or database. All right, so hopefully you like that. We're gonna walk through a few examples. We're gonna show you how easy it is to get started with this. And then towards the end, we'll actually flip over and we'll start to look at the code. Now, what we've done is just to get started with this, we've preloaded in both one document and one CSV table. I'm just gonna run one query just so we can see that those are working. That is something that we would recommend the first time that you install this. And then we'll get to the really fun part, which is dynamically um, uploading different documents and CSVs that we wanna start asking natural language queries to. So first thing that we're gonna ask, what we've loaded up is a template employment agreement. Again, one of the reasons we picked documents like employment agreements is because nobody wants to read an employment agreement. So using generative AI to read things that are templates, standard, and kind of boring types of documents, we actually think is a fantastic use case for generative AI. So um, we're gonna say, what is the annual rate of the base salary? Again, this is a question then that we're gonna be asking against this employment document that we've preloaded. This just gives you a sense of the kind of output that we're gonna see. All right, so the model has come back. Um, the way to read this, it's given the answer of $200,000. What's below that, the text, source, and page is some post-process fact-checking that we do to tie the answer that we got back from the LLM back to the original sources that were provided. And so here we can see the grounded source that it was using was the Nike Executive Employment Agreement. That was the document that we had actually preloaded when we launched the chatbot. The information was found on page three, and then you see the snippet of text that you can quickly eyeball and see that it does in fact confirm um, the answer that we got from the LLM. So, so far so good. First test that we've done actually did come out positively. But now let's flip over to SQL mode. Now again, when we flipped over to SQL mode here, we're actually pivoting from a RAG-based workflow with a RAG-based model and actually a semantic re-ranker that we're using. So all that's happening kind of dynamically and locally from a RAG point of view. When we flip over to SQL mode, we're actually gonna use a different model path and we're gonna start interacting with a database. So the sample table we've loaded into this is just a very, very simple customer table. Again, it's an example that we actually include. And again, it's a very good hello world just to verify that everything is working the right way. So we're gonna ask now again of our SQL table, this isn't gonna be against the document, but against the SQL table, we're just gonna ask a simple question. What are the names of the customers with annual spin? And what we've included, I'll explain this as we go, is we've added a command, magic word if you will, the hashtag show. When you actually enter hashtag show, it actually will then give you the SQL query that was generated. So you can see it came back really, really fast. It gave us the answer to all the customers with an annual spend over a thousand. And then it shows us what was the SQL that was actually a translation of our query into SQL. All right, so we're two for two, so far so good. Both of these were the documents that we had preloaded. Now let's kind of do the fun stuff. Let's just start to load in some other documents and see how this works in real time. Okay, so we're gonna to start to browse our files here. This is uploading a document. When we upload this document, I'll actually flip back. 
This is gonna be in RAG mode. So this is ingesting some kind of document. We wanna do fact-based question answering against this document. So we've put a whole bunch of files here and we're just gonna to start to go through some of these. I'm gonna pick, and again, I hope no one thinks this is too, too boring. Let's just pick the same type of employment agreement. So you might have a pile of these that you have to go through and you have to maybe compare some analysis you know, of various details from the agreement. Let's pick another executive employment agreement. Now what you can see is we've uploaded this. And so at the very bottom, and what you can see is we've, we've uploaded this Metis executive agreement. The document has already been parsed. It's been broken down into 97 text chunks. So we're ready to go. And so now what we're gonna see when we ask the same question that we asked up at the top is we're gonna see a different answer because instead of going against that Nike executive employment agreement, we're now gonna be querying against the Metis executive employment agreement. And actually, I guess in this case, the salary was exactly the same, but you can see that it actually was coming from a different source document. All right, enough with executive employment agreements. Let's go and let's load up something that's a little different, perhaps a little bit more interesting. So let's pull up a document on J.D. Salinger. And again, this was a short paper on J.D. Salinger. And we're just gonna ask a basic question. Um, where was J.D. Salinger born? All right, so we have the answer in New York City, January 1st, 1919. We have the snippet of text. We have the source and the page that that was found on. All right, let's keep going. We'll keep flipping through some of these documents. Uh, let's look at an invoice. Our invoice, what is the total invoice? All right, cool. So same thing, gave us the answer, and then gave us the source citation and the grounding for it so that we can quickly verify if the answer was correct. All right, let's look at a couple of other things here. Let's look at this. This is a PDF. This is an earnings release. And we're gonna say what were the what was the operating income, the operating order. And you can see in this case, again, it's a useful guide of the size of the document. This tells us there were 61 text chunks that were prepared. Again, pretty nice here. We get our answer, 2.6 billion, a 23% increase over the same period year to year. We do see the text and we actually see where it was able to derive that information. All right, let's do one more. That's just kind of fun. Here, you'll notice we've used a mix of different files. So we've used some office document types. We've used some PDF documents. Let's do something kind of cool. Let's pick up a WAV file. So this is a voice file. This is a very famous clip from the movie, All the President's Men. This is the line where you know the person who is their informant is saying, just follow the money. So that is what ultimately we are gonna do here. So we are going to upload that WAV file. Now the WAV file is getting parsed. It was converted, it's a pretty small file, so it did parse very quickly. And we're just gonna ask the question, what should I do? And again, remember, this is being asked of that document. And so it says, follow the money. And so the text was, it was a lawyer with brown bag of money. Hey, follow the money, what do you mean? I can't tell, but follow the money. So again, here was a case where we were able to parse, you know, locally, a voice file, convert it into text, convert it into text chunks, and then start running natural language queries against. Now, everything that you're seeing is local and everything that you're seeing is real time. There is a little bit of a latency in the response, but you can actually see how fast we're able to ingest the new document, get it ready, and then start asking queries for it. Now, we've spent a lot of time going through the RAG scenarios. Let's flip over to the SQL because this is something that we think, again, is something that is a pretty exciting and interesting concept that we're gonna see more and more of over time, is we're gonna take a table, and again, this was kind of inspired by some of those executive employment agreements, the extent you can be inspired by executive employment agreements. We just created a very simple CSV table, and we're gonna use this just as a proxy. We're gonna take this CSV, we're gonna load it in, and we have a, a database handler that will, in effect, extract the schema data based on the column information in that CSV. It'll provide some basic protections then, row by row by row, analyzing and confirming that the CSV is in the right structure. And then it'll actually load that table and create the table in a database, and then it'll be ready for us to start asking natural language queries against it. So we are gonna go take that table. And again, keep in mind, it's a very small table. We've actually used this up to about 10,000 row CSVs. The delay then might be 30 seconds to a minute. We have a little bit of trouble from time to time with Streamlet, just managing state and managing memory. But generally speaking, you should be able to ingest reasonably large CSVs into it using this mechanism. You can see we've completed it. The screen up so you can see. So it has completed it. Again, it's a very, very small table. But now that we've loaded that table, we can start to ask some questions against it. And we are going to ask, what are the names that gives 
with Employer Tesco. And you're going to see the SQL. All right, pretty cool. So we were able to immediately run a query. We uploaded the CSV. The CSV was parsed and ingested by a database. The table and the table schema were created in real time. We were then able to start running queries. The query, you know, our, what are the names of the executives with the employer Tesco, gets translated into the SQL query that we have here below. That is a well-formed SQL statement. It actually does reflect what we were looking to do. And then the answer actually comes back of the query from the database. So pretty cool, our business bot, everything running locally. We're able to interactively flip between a SQL mode and a RAG mode, ingest you know, new documents as we're doing this. We get all the fact checking and the processing afterwards to give us some sense whether the answer was correct. And again, we see this as maybe the framework, the starting point of something that could be built into a pretty useful business tool, giving people the type of interface that they want but under the covers then providing both data privacy, high quality and accuracy, and then the ability to ground this in your own source document. So that is the business bot. Okay, so now let's flip over. Let's walk you through the code. As always, the code we're actually posting in the LMware repository, and we'll walk you through all the components, some of the prerequisites for it, and then um, we will let you get off so you can start you know, playing with this code. So let's flip over to the IDE, and what do we have here? All right, so this is our business business bot, open up the screen so that it's a little bit bigger and a little easier to read. We include a bunch of comments. How did we do this? Well, the first thing is there are actually three models we're using under the covers and all of them are running locally. All of them are an open source. All of them you know, are available through LLMware and through Hugging Face. We're using our models that LMware has developed. There's the Bling 5.3 GGUF. That is the core RAG question answering model that we're using. You can see very, very good, high quality responses that we're able to get. A little bit of a latency. So this is something we're still working on, how we can continue to enhance the performance of it. But all of this was just running on a one laptop. So there's the Bling 5.3. That's the core RAG model. Second is the Slim SQL tool. This is the model that we're using for text to SQL. It's a very, very small model. It runs really fast. You will notice, and again, our upfront caution on this, keep the queries relatively simple and straightforward and relatively close to the SQL schema to get the best results. I think what you'll find is that you can get some great results out of this. But again, keep it simple and keep it straightforward. The final model that we've used is a model that we've just been introduced to, but it's now one of our favorite models. And again, thanks to our friends at Jinna AI. This is a model that they released, I think just a few months ago. It's a re-ranker turbo model. Again, it's small, fast, very, very high quality. And the way that it actually works, it doesn't use an embedding model. It doesn't use a vector database, I should say. What it actually does is it takes those text chunks that come out of the parser and it runs, in effect, a batch semantic similarity of those documents compared to the query and gives you a ranking. So we're then able to take the text chunks sort of processed in memory in real time that have the closest affinity to that query. We concatenate that to form our source context and that's what gets passed into the model. So Jinna Reranker Turbo, we'd encourage you to go check it out. There is a link to their Hugging Face page. It's an awesome, awesome model and a great tool for building business bots like this. We are gonna use SQLite. We do offer the option if you wanted to build this on Postgres ultimately try to scale this. The other thing then, we built all of this UI, probably looks familiar, we built it on Streamlit. So if you haven't used Streamlit before, you will have to pip install Streamlit. And then the way you'll actually run this script is from the command line, the Streamlit run bizbot.py. Again, more information if you wanna get information about Streamlit. Sample data, I mean, again, we would encourage you the first time that you use this, use the two sample data that's getting automatically loaded just to make sure that everything is installed, everything is working right, and then you can really start having some fun bringing in some of your own documents, really experimenting with what you can do with this. Um, last thing then that we would wanna say, this is running locally. So the speed and performance of it, a lot of it is gonna depend on your CPU and GPU configuration. We would recommend you have at least 16 gigabytes of RAM and ideally 32 to run the example. Here is the example script. The basic flow of it, the core of that Streamlit application is actually right here. Once you invoke and run, this is the core logic that gets run. You can see a bit of some of the uh, kind of the setup, how the sidebar gets set up. The key thing is really here 
which is once a user enters a prompt, depending on the model type that's been selected, if it's RAG, it gets a RAG response. If it's a SQL, it goes and gets a SQL response. And then in the code, we'll show you, here's the code to go get a RAG response. And the first step after parsing the document and breaking it up into a bunch of a list of dictionaries, once we do that, we actually pass it through the re-ranker model. We run that inference on the re-ranker. We take the top three text chunks. We add those three text chunks to our prompt. And the way that the machinery of LLMware works behind the scenes, it automatically concatenates that, it batches it, it builds the prompt for us. And then we run our prompt with source. And then we run a few different fact checks afterwards just to see what kind of response we've gotten and how we start to enrich the answer with the source material that we've been able to derive from that. All of that is this code here. And then finally, the last piece is the SQL response. And again, for the SQL response, we're actually using the agenting infrastructure inside LLMware. And again, a really powerful one-line command that can take that prompt, the database and the table, and it can run the whole process for us. So we automatically then get that model response and that's ultimately what we serve back to the user. You can see the code, it's 300-ish lines of code. All of this is available in the LLMware repository and it's really been designed, once you go through these directions, once you install Streamlit, this really should be copy, run, you know, Streamlit run, and then you will immediately see the UI pop up in your browser and you are good to go and off to start using this. If you don't have these models, if you haven't downloaded them before, they will be downloaded the first time that you run this. So don't be surprised if it takes a minute or two you know, for um, that to happen and then for the UI to come up. Again, last thing that we'll say about this, we think this is a pretty exciting concept. This is the framework for it. Obviously, a lot could be done in terms of taking the UI to a whole other level, building in the ability to do more parallelization and streaming and multi-user, building in a JavaScript and a React front end. All of those are things that if you're excited by that, we would welcome contributions in the community around those areas. The second thing that we would say then is keep in mind, all this is gonna be running locally. All of these are small local models, especially with the SQL side, be nice, keeping queries, Simple, clear, and in line with the data schema is gonna give you much, much better results. If you wanna trick it, you wanna break it, you'll probably be able to, but the only person who's gonna be frustrated is you because you'll, you'll get a lot of answers that say, I'm really sorry, yeah, I couldn't figure this out, I couldn't figure that out. But that's one of the reasons that we do offer that hashtag show so that you can see the SQL, you can see if something is going wrong in the formulation of the SQL. That gives you some clues then on how you can adapt some of your natural language to more easily enable the model to generate that SQL. We would welcome feedback, ideas, future directions of where we take this, you know, counter any issues with this. As always, please send us some feedback. You can raise it through our GitHub repo. Thank you, everybody. Take care and have a wonderful day.